Hello everyone, this is God's Girl G and thank you so much for joining me today. If you are new to my channel, welcome. And for those of you who are returning to my channel to view this video and you're not already subscribed, I am gonna encourage you to do so by hitting that subscribe icon. That way you won't miss out on any of the new videos that I record and upload, which I do on a weekly basis. And if during the course of this video, you hear something that you like, click the thumbs up and co or comment below. I love reading all of your comments and responding accordingly. So let's get into today's discussion. If you type the word dating into your Bible search engine, you will find that nothing shows up. Nada, zilch, zero. Not only is there nothing in the Bible that specifically speaks to dating, but the concept of dating didn't really exist. In biblical times, the process of finding a spouse had very little to do with compatibility and personality traits, but it had everything to do with family lineage and economic status. Finding a mate functioned a lot more like a bartering system than dinner and a movie. Now, as I've stated in another video, in Christianity, we like formulas and very clear directions. On Saturday, go down to the Kroger on Main Street. In the frozen food section, in front of the vegetables, there will be a man in blue jeans wearing a t-shirt that reads, I love God. When you drop your bag of frozen peas, he will pick it up for you. There will be an instant attraction. You will date for a year, then marry him and live happily ever after. Now go. I, I, <laughs> I really wish it was that simple, but it, it's not. It doesn't work that way, people. In most aspects of modern life, God doesn't provide cookie cutter formulas or answers, but be encouraged. Though he may not always provide us with a direct plan, he always gives us everything that we need to get us to where he wants us to go. Though the Bible doesn't talk directly about dating, it does speak volumes about relationships, godly interactions, and principles that can be applied to how you date. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31, reminds us that no matter what it is that we're doing, it can be used as a means to glorify God. When it comes to dating, I think everyone could benefit from relaxing a bit about searching for hard and fast rules and learning to apply godly wisdom to every single part of our lives. In an article written entitled Biblical Dating, How It's Different from Modern Dating, Scott Croft makes the following interesting conclusions. Both Biblical dating and modern dating, and he uses the word biblical very generally here based upon some foundational principles. He defines the two both agreeing that they're both a method of introduction and carrying out a premarital relationship between a single man and a single woman, but their methods are different. So he came up with Three differences between biblical dating and modern dating. And again, biblical dating here is used very in general terms regarding relationships, okay? Here's what he says. The first point that he makes is that modern dating is about finding the person that's right for me. Whereas biblical dating is more about being the right person to serve my future spouse's needs and to be a God glorifying husband or wife. The second difference that he points out between biblical dating and modern dating. In modern dating, intimacy precedes commitment. In biblical dating, commitment precedes intimacy. And intimacy here, he is referring to as sexual intimacy. And his third point that he makes about the difference between modern dating and biblical dating is the modern dating approach tells us that the way you figure out whether or not you want to marry someone is to act like you're already married. And if you like it, you make it official. In biblical dating, scripture guides us how to find a mate and marry. And the Bible teaches, among other things, that you should act in a way as to not imply marriage level commitment until that commitment exists before the Lord. So out of all of this, 
Here's kind of my conclusion. The Bible makes it very clear that life is less about the do's and don'ts and so much more about doing what is beneficial, healthy, and righteous. So what does all this mean when it comes to dating? How can dating be done in a way that's healthy and righteous? Now, I've often heard people say, I'm not about playing games when it comes to dating, but I've often found myself kind of responding to that comment that life is actually a game. And if dating is a part of life, then dating is a game too. So before some of y'all get all upset, let, let me explain myself here. Why else would a common reaction to receiving a text message from someone that you like cause you to state the following or think the following? I'm gonna wait like three hours before I res respond to this text. To me, when you have things like that in your head or other rules that you abide by, like if they call, I'll, I'm gonna wait till the next day to give them a call back. That's part of, that's actually a game. Those are rules that you have in your mind that helps you determine and play this dating game in a wise fashion. Now you might not realize it, but real life is a game of strategy. Most importantly, successful players put their time into the right things and dating is no different. Now, while I'll be the first one to admit that we live in a culture that has blurred the lines of what dating actually looks like, the truth is, even though the definition and the rules of dating have changed down through the years, deep down, dating is what it is, an opportunity to get to know the opposite sex with the hopes of finding someone to marry, bottom line. So understanding that dating can be a game, and dating is a game because there are different methods that are used, I want to provide my top six dating mistakes that I think are important to make note of. Dating mistake number one, you're dating the wrong people. One of the biggest relationship mistakes people make has less to do with what they do in a relationship and more to do who they choose to enter into a relationship with. You can spend so much time thinking about what you want in someone without ever having thought about what it is you don't want. When it comes to finding love, there are some red flags that you simply cannot ignore. God's word reminds us the importance of connecting with people who are in line with our spiritual life. The truth about relationships is that the healthier both individuals are emotionally and spiritually, the healthier the relationship will be. So think through the people you allowed in your life and ask yourself the question, were they the kind of people to build you up or tear you down? Healthy relationships will always add more to your life than what they take out of your life. Dating mistake number two, you think that physical chemistry is everything. As Christians, it's easy to get sick and tired of hearing the rhetoric, wait until marriage. But we're not just talking about sex here. When it comes to dating, you can easily fall into the trap of allowing physical interactions to take the lead before you even know what happened. When it comes to dating, it's easy to allow the physical interactions to take the lead. But time and again, I've heard from both married and unmarried couples about the harm that encompasses those who allow their physical relationship to lead the way. Now, there's certainly a time and a place for physical affection in dating relationships, but letting the physical lead the way will always skew your judgment, heighten your emotions, and fool your concept of commitment. When the physical attributes of your relationship takes control, they have the power to ruin a relationship. Dating mistake number three, you believe you're worthless. There is so much truth to the concept that you will always attract the kind of relationship that you think you deserve. Human beings are magnetic and we tend to attract those people who are similar to us in our level of emotional and spiritual health. In the end, you always attract the kind of relationship that you think you're worth. So take time to consider what you feel you're worth and how that plays into your relationship choices. The best way to have a healthy dating relationship is to become a healthy person. Dating mistake number four, you don't talk to God about your relationships. 
It's amazing to me why we don't take the time to talk to the Almighty God who knows all things and can make all things happen. I just don't understand why we don't talk to him about our relationships. God knows what's best for our lives and he knows what we need to get us there. Why not go to him for wisdom and direction? Dating mistake number five. You downplay the importance of boundaries. When it comes to Christian dating advice, Many people have a lot to say about the dangers of physical intimacy in dating relationships. And they talk about the importance of having that boundary to help protect you from entering in to a physical relationship. But they don't talk much about the emotional boundaries that are also important. Now, in my opinion, emotional intimacy can be just as damaging as physical intimacy if you're not careful to proceed with caution. So as you approach possibly a new mindset about dating, maybe it's time to take inventory on your emotional health and the boundaries that you've put up to protect your heart. Dating with wisdom means that you also understand the importance of emotional and spiritual boundaries by learning not to go too deep too fast. God's word tells us to guard our hearts because the truth is anything valuable is worth protecting. Dating mistake number six, you forget to have fun. Lighten up everyone. Dating should be an enjoyable process. Dates should be fun ways of doing things with people that you like, not chores because you feel you have to. So make it interesting. Try something new. Have fun because dating is fun. It's supposed to be. It's easy to include God in our spiritual lives. But why not include him in our relational world as well? Throughout God's word, he encourages us again and again to bring our needs, concerns, and desires to him. He cares about the things that concern us and he's longing to connect with us in a way that's meaningful. Our relationships can be an instrument that draws us close to God as we seek him for wisdom and discernment along the way. It's time to take some of that pressure off biblically dating and instead see the entirety of our interactions with others, including how we date as an opportunity to connect with God, to become our best, and reflect Him to the people that He brings into our lives. Because there's truly nothing more biblical than that. Thank you for joining me today. And don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment. Bye.